So today we welcome to Global Citizenship Education interview series, Betty Lisk. Betty Lisk is a professor emeritus in the School of Education at La Trobe University, Melbourne, and editor-in-chief of the Journal of Studies in International Education. She's also a research fellow at the Center for International Higher Education at Boston College in the United States, and uh, honorary visiting researcher at the Center for Higher Education Internationalization at uh, University Cattolica del Sacro Cuore in Italy and the Senior Research Fellow at Curtin University in Perth, Australia. That is also a member of the Victorian International Education Committee. She has a broad range of experience in universities covering more than 25 years from casual lecturer in the Center for Applied Linguistics at the University of South Australia and Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic at La Trobe University. And today she's well known internationally as a researcher, consultant, a leader on internationalization of the curriculum, teaching and learning in higher education. She has an extensive range of publications, including refereed journal articles, research reports, book chapters, essays, opinion pieces, and practical teaching guides. Her book, Internationalizing the Curriculum, published by Rotledge in 2015, is a bestseller in the series. And I'll stop here. I know you have a deep experience in the field and a long bio, but um, I'd like to begin uh, this conversation by thanking you for joining this uh, interview series on global citizenship. It's my pleasure, Emilia. Thank you very much for the invitation. Well, Betty, I think uh, today we are going to uh, discuss uh, complex um, notions and concepts. And uh, uh, all my guests here would, uh, would get a uh, first question and it's a quite straightforward question. And the question is, what is global citizen and what is global citizenship, in your opinion? Okay, so let's start with the concept of global citizenship, because I think, first of all, the thing that comes to my mind is this is a contested concept. And even this, primarily because the notion of citizenship is traditionally tied to the notion of being a member of a nation state mm. who provides... Um, certain, uh, who provides that status, if you like. Um, and there's a sense of, as a citizen, you will be entitled to certain things and you will also give certain things back to the nation. Mm. So I think the notion of global citizenship to those people who um, understand the term citizenship in a very particular way seems impossible because it's not legally it's, yeah. it's not a legally possible thing. But to me, the concept is very valuable if we think of it as um, an identity mm. that we bestow almost upon ourselves, almost. Um, an identity that uh, values um, diversity and understands the responsibilities of being a member of this, of a global community, of a world that is increasingly interconnected, not just economically, but as we're seeing more so also, but as, as is becoming more obvious, I think, climate, world issues, world problems, um, these things are things that we all share, we have in common as members of a global community. If we're simply members of that community who are, who are not concerned with what happens to other members of the community, then I don't think we're global citizens. I think citizenship in its fundamental nature implies responsibilities as well as privileges. So we have the privilege to live in this world. We have responsibilities to the world as, a, as to the world climate, for example, but also to other people who live in the world. And of course, climate issues and climate health are tied up with food security um, and uh, the well-being of people all over the world. What I do here in Adelaide will have an impact somewhere else in the world. So understanding that 
respecting um, respecting the responsibilities that come with living on this world and having a commitment to act is what I think a global citizen is. Someone who understands that, who, who respects the responsibility that comes with global citizenship and who is prepared to take action, even if it's small actions at home, but is prepared to take action um, to both stay informed about global issues, but also take action in any way that's possible. Very interesting. And I've, I've read several of your publications and, uh, and I must say very interesting, you are developing very interesting concepts. We'll discuss later uh, specifically uh, the notion of international uh, internationalization of the curriculum. But I'd like to stay on this question mm -hmm. and introduce a discussion on the notion of global citizen, because um, in my memory, you discuss uh, frequently um, this notion of the responsible or engaged global citizen. So I'd like mm -hmm. to discuss this with you because it's quite interesting. As you know, very well, there are several ways and several theories through which we can approach the notion of educating global citizens, global citizenship education, some of which are a little bit more uh, neoliberal oriented, some others a little, yeah. bit, a little bit more uh, critical, transformative. Yeah. So I'd like to hear from you um, how you interpret this notion of engaged and responsible global citizen. Uh, so in a sense, I think it's much closer to the end of the theoretical spectrum related to cosmopolitanism, to a sense of belonging to this um, community of people who have a shared, um, shared responsibility but also shared goals and, and a common humanity. In that regard, being responsible is, is being able to understand where other people, other people's issues and, and, and in being responsible, also understanding what actions one might take to address some of those issues. Yeah, yeah, there is this uh, connection between theory and, and practice and action that is, is often highly debated. So taking actions rather than just talking about issues and then yeah. lack, lacking this. Um... And that is the space that I have worked in a lot. I mean, what my bio doesn't say is that I started mm -hmm. my work as a secondary school teacher. Mm -hmm. And so I was trained as an educator. So my discipline background is education. And so I understand the way that learning works and the way that values are formed. That was part of my um, academic study, if you like. But when, you, when you're a teacher, whether it's in primary school, high school or in tertiary studies, you need to understand learning. You come to understand learners. And that influences the way that you see the world and the way that you want to um, draw practice from theory. So, you know, if you're informed by a certain set of theories, well, then you will approach the, the notion of global citizenship differently. I think the criticisms around global citizenship as being really um, focused on an elite group of people who can move about the world and get the best out of the world is a fairly restricted view of global citizenship. Mm. It, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't allow for people to play with ideas and to understand the term global and the term citizenship in different ways mm. by looking at it from different directions. I do think that for internationalisation, 
and I know we're coming to that later, but it ties in a bit here, I think. I think the focus on mobility as a, a primary strategy for internationalisation in universities for so many years mm. um, has led in some ways to this movement of global citizenship as being something as an alternative to creating an elite minority of globally connected students who can afford to travel, can afford right. to take time out of their lives, have probably travelled before they get to university anyway. So they're just kind of expanding their already existing international networks to be kind of more global. And they're going to be able to get the most out of the world as in their chosen profession because they have these incredibly rich connections. But I think that the people that talk about global citizenship and come at it from an educational perspective, come at it from a very different, come out with a very different set of learning outcomes that they're looking for. Yeah. And it's in the rich description of those learning outcomes in courses and programs that we start to see some of the values emerge that I think are core to internationalisation but have been lost in translation mm. in a lot of the um, translation into action. And I can I could go on and say why I think that's been why I think that's happened, but we can maybe do that later. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm glad to. I'm very happy that you're you're putting forward this analysis that is, in a way, we can define it critical because um, many of the guests that I welcomed here to the series are critical, but not critical of the concept of global citizenship, but the way that the, the type of knowledge and values that we should we should help our learners to develop must be critical rather than just, as you say, traveling around the world and, uh, you know, it, rather than this concept just being restricted to someone who can, you know, uh, invest a lot of money in traveling. And, and I'm very happy we are having this type of discussion because it expands the, the goal of educating global, citizen, educating global citizen, citizens toward the direction of social justice and many other values that we need uh, nowadays. And so I want to... In relation to what you just said, I want to ask you a second question. And of course, later we will expand on uh, the connection between uh, global citizenry and international, internationalization of the curriculum. But I want to ask you a question that ties with your journey as an educator, um, how global citizenship is related to your journey as an educator. Um, mm. This is this is usually a very interesting question for my guests here because it ties life experiences to the to this very important notion. So I'm very curious to learn uh, your answer to this. Okay, so let me let me start. I'll try to keep it to no more than a few minutes. <laughs> but but I I was born in Adelaide, which is a, was a city then of just over just under a million people, it's now nearly a million and a half people, in South Australia, in, in Australia, quite um, remote from North America and Europe, and, and certainly also it's a big island country. I was from a, um, a working-class family. Uh, my mother was on her own. She brought up three of us on her own, and... There was not much money and there was certainly no money for big holidays. Certainly going overseas in Australia, we call it overseas, it's not mm. just going abroad, because you have to fly or go, get on a, on a boat. Mm. Most people fly and it's an expensive endeavour. So for me, travel, you know, I barely moved out of the state I was living in, out of the city of Adelaide until I was well into my 20s. I was over 40 before I got a passport. And yet, I think I was the, the seeds of global citizenship had been sown through my education, through and through my life experience at home in Adelaide. 
so was I, when I started teaching, um, I was um, I was teaching Indigenous students. I was teaching refugee students. I was teaching migrant students at a time in their life when they're teenagers, when they're trying to find their identity, when their families are struggling often with a whole range of things. Mm. I would meet with their families and and I became fascinated by these people's stories and by how some of the things that were happening um, in other parts of the world were having a dramatic Im- impact on them mm. and also, of course, on the local environment because suddenly we had a, a fairly small city that had an influx of refugees and migrants following the um various wars and and disruptions uh and so you know that sense of being connected to the rest of the world yeah and to making friends also with people who had very different life experiences sparked a curiosity in me so I think one of the key things about global citizenship is curiosity Mm -hmm. um I would then went um to, to teach in the tertiary sector teaching English um to migrants and refugee students, predominantly preparing them for university study, did a master's degree in applied linguistics to upgrade my qualifications, then did a PhD in um, uh, an uh, an educational doctorate in internationalisation of the curriculum, primarily because the university that I was going to, that I was teaching at, um, wanted to... uh, incorporate international perspective development into every student's education, in part because there were many international students coming to the institution and also the faculty members were going overseas to teach our Australian programs in parts of Asia and in Europe with partners as well. So there was that sense that people needed to be a bit more aware and, and develop a certain set of characteristics that would see th- would see them remain connected uh, and give them the skills to remain connected globally after their education had completed. So their lifelong learning skills, all of those soft skills that we often apply in education but in a local context, thinking about how those prepare people to move into um, feeling part of this kind of global community. Right. Very interesting. Being able to contribute to that but also gaining from it. So it has to be two-way. So I think global citizenship as a concept has, when you connect it with internationalisation of the curriculum, is really about a two-way relationship between communities of people around the world and the individual yeah what they can learn from them but also what they can give back to them yeah yeah this is this is very interesting and it ties with the next question i want to ask you and um, is about your project uh, internationalizing the curriculum in action um i think this is a very interesting project and um, i'd like to know what is the core idea of the project and, and why the project matters? Um, and I believe this could be very interesting to our audience as well. Okay, so the, the core idea of the project is, is intercultural, international and global learning for all students at home uh, and abroad, but bringing those two things together and thinking about the total student experience. Mm. So at the core of it, sometimes people put global citizenship at the core, at the institutional level. They say we, in terms of internationalising teaching and learning, we're going to focus on developing global citizenship in our students. And then they define those skills. Mm. So it's, it's become very connected with internationalising the curriculum in part because I think the term international slash intercultural as 
has always been at the centre of the definition of internationalisation of higher education, has been very difficult for people to interpret in practice mm. other than through mobility. You know, other than, yes, that's obviously mobility, so we can send it there. But it's only recently, I think, that we've really understood the extreme limitations of that approach. Not that mobility isn't terrific. Not that mm. I, do, I don't value and know that I learned so much about the world from in my 40s when I finally got my passport. I got it because I was going to work in Hungary in an English language at an, a university English language centre, basically. And I was, I, the, the whole family came and it was a very different sort of experience. It really was a, a, a life defining experience, if you like. Hmm. The, the global community of people that I work with is much richer when it's not simply, when it's international, intercultural and global. And by that I mean I'm not just working with people who look like me, who have similar backgrounds to me. I'm working with people who speak four or five different languages. I'm working with people who um, come from developing countries as well as people who come from um, developed and rich countries. I'm, I, I, I can't, uh, I can't, you can't, I don't think you can overestimate the value of mobility, mm. but I think, I, th I don't think you can, well, do I want to say that? I, I think we overestimate the value of mobility that is not integrated in to the development of the whole person. All right. All right. Okay. And I think uh, this this also helps us with expanding our discussion into a core uh, question and uh, moving toward the end of this uh, very interesting discussion. How would you define uh, global citizenship uh, using three keywords and why these uh, three keywords? I know this uh, is a challenging question. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to say curiosity. Yes. Yes. Um, commitment to action to uh, to a a better world for everyone. Mm, interesting. Um, and I'm going to say uh, that between those two, probably comes respect. Respect. Yeah, curiosity, respect, and commitment. Okay. If I and could have found another C to put in the middle, that would have been good. But curiosity, respect, and commitment will do for now. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting because we have a set of values and, and, and principles every time. And, uh, very, very interesting. I'd like you to expand uh, on these three core uh, <laughs> principles because... Um, these uh, are uh, the core of um, uh, the interview series. Try to bring together a diversity of perspectives and try to put together uh, principles, values, knowledges that are uh, fundamental uh, to this discussion on global citizenship. So I think it would be interesting to, to learn from you why, for example, curiosity, why commitment and why respect. So curiosity, because I think it drives the way that we approach um, problems, issues and people. It, it, uh, it's what sparks um, us to want to find out more, to develop our understanding mm. of world issues, of, um, of our own our own selves so we have to be curious about ourselves as well as curious about others I think to be good global citizens I think in in terms of respect I think if we if we don't respect and in some ways have a fairly egalitarian view of the world mm -hmm. that we all have an equal 
right to uh, a certain type of life, at least chances and opportunities in that, then that we're all equal, we're all fundamentally equal, mm. then you, you don't respect others. And if you don't have the curiosity to find out why they're lo- like they are, if you don't approve of their behaviours, then I don't think you can understand them. So I think the curiosity and respect leads to understanding and that understanding underpinned, underpins this commitment to being responsible in the way that, um, that you take action, doing what you can and also understanding that situations change and that therefore um, we might need to change. We might need to change the way we think about certain things, and that's very difficult. If we believe that mobility is the best experience you can have to become a global citizen, we have to challenge that at some point. I, you know, constantly I think we need to be reaffirming, either reaffirming or challenging in a way that allows us to adjust slightly that perspective that we have based on new evidence. Right, right. And there is a third element, and, and you, you touched on that briefly, but I'd like to hear a little bit more on the commitment uh, to a better world for everyone. Mm. So this is speaking to the values that I think that I see underpinning global citizenship. Mm. Responsible, which, which is why I put the responsible at the front in my book, right. responsible global citizenship, which was sort of an an answer, I guess, to the the view of global citizenship as being a transactional sort mm. of um, concept, um, a concept that's going to allow you to to take as much from the world as you possibly can, mm. and to have the skills to do that. That commitment to uh, has to be underpinned by those values I spoke about before, um, by the respect and the curiosity, but also um, a commitment to a better world for everyone. Yeah, yeah. I think this ties also with our discussion in the first part of, of the conversation about taking actions. And so without actions, difficult to you know make a better word for everyone. And uh, and uh, very, very interesting and holistic uh, discussion uh, with Bentley Lisk on, uh, on uh, notions of global citizenship, global citizenship education, internationalization of the curriculum. So I want to thank you for joining this uh, interview series. And I, your contribution is very, very, very important, uh, particularly because you, you have a deep experience in the field. And would you like to share any forthcoming projects with uh, our audience here? Anything that you like to particularly emphasize about um, work in progress, publications? Okay, so uh, so work in progress. I'm currently um, working with um, a number of Latin American universities, but also uh, having having completed um, last year an initial project um, funded by the group called Koala, the Australian government, an Australian government group that um, encourages interaction and learning between and exchange between um, Latin American universities and Australian universities. And what we've been doing is actually living this kind of intercultural, international, global experience as we work through how does internationalising the curriculum and uh, in a, sometimes moving into the concept of global citizenship education, how does that differ in a Latin American context to an Australian Asian context? So that work's been very interesting mm. because, you know, in my work I've put um, together a number of frameworks that worked uh, 
10 years ago or have worked for 10 years in different contexts but never as been able to go into as much depth in looking at how they are interpreted in different national contexts in Latin America. So right. thinking, yeah, thinking also about diversity within a region, diversity within universities within a region but within a nation, and thinking about the complexity of what we try to do but the absolute value of collaborating in that way and having to do it online entirely has mm. been actually very enabling because we get much more done because we can talk every fortnight rather than mm. occasionally. It will be nice when we can travel again, but, you know, if we're also going to consider ourselves as global citizens, we're also going to be considering our carbon footprint, aren't we? So we shouldn't be getting on a plane right. and going away to do things all the time. It's probably one of the lessons that we learned uh, or been learning from the COVID-19 pandemic. crisis, pandemic. Yeah. yeah, you're completely right on this. All right. Well, I know that we could discuss for hours, but I want to really, really thank uh, Betty Lisk, Professor Betty Lisk, for joining this interview series. It was precious. It was enriching. Thank you very much. A pleasure, Emiliano. I hope people enjoy it. Thank you. A pleasure to meet you.